Peace, it's Brother Polite, and I'm here to talk to you about something very important today. No religion, but it's about this damn devil. I'm not talking to you about the devil with the horns, the devil with the red outfit, or the devil with the tail. I'm here to talk to you today about the devil in the flesh. Milk. Milk is allowed to have 750,000 somatic cells, a euphemism for pus. That's right, pus. It's allowed to have 24,000 live bacteria before the Food and Drug Administration takes it off the shelf. That's bad bacteria, not the good bacteria. And it's also pasteurized, a process in which they use radiation to prolong the shelf life of the food. Now this pasteurization process that prolongs the shelf life of the food incurs the stress of cancer. Milk also has sulfur-containing amino acids. This sulfur-containing amino acids throws off the pH of the human body. Meaning if you worked in a warehouse and it was 100 degrees outside and you had no AC, it would be hard to do your job. If you worked in a warehouse and it was below 5 degrees and there was no heat, it would be hard to do your job. So when you go into the human body, what I want you to realize is, just think about Pac-Man. Boom. Okay? And this would be the area that you call the substrate. The substrate. And this would be your lactase. When you see the suffix, it means it's an enzyme. And then this would be your lactose. But keep in mind that it would be double. So let's say this is your lactose, right? Now what I want you to understand, right? But lactose is a disaccharide, so it's two forms of sugar, two sugar in one. Makes it even harder to break down. But what I want you to realize is that they have to be alternative. This has to be the opposite shape of the enzyme in order for the enzyme to break it down. But when sulfur-containing amino acids, animal protein, goes into the bloodstream, it destroys the enzyme at the substrate area, so your enzyme winds up looking like this. And therefore, it can't properly break down the sugar that it's supposed to break down, okay? Because it's destroyed at the substrate area. That's what animal protein does. And when this happens, that means that your blood is too acidic. So what your body has to do is buffer the acidity by doing a process called leaching, which is to scrape calcium from off your bones in order to buffer the acidity. And then the excess calcium goes into the kidneys and can offset any of a number of diseases should you continue to eat like this. Also, it's gonna compromise the integrity of your bone density. And please keep in mind, if you're gonna drink milk because you need the calcium, be aware that there's no magnesium and company in it, and you need a one-to-one -one ratio between calcium and magnesium, because if you don't, the calcium is gonna tear away at your bones, and in turn, especially for women, you're gonna wind up having osteoporosis, and then the next thing to go is gonna be bone conduction loss of hearing, because you're gonna wind up losing your hearing after you lose your bone density, because you hear by way of your bones. That's why in the middle ear, you have your incus, malleus, and stapes. In the middle ear, in the inner ear, you have your cochlea, which has hair suspended by it, and the vibration from the incus, malleus, and stapes, the ossicles, causes the hairs in the cochlea to maneuver based on those vibrations to transmit messages and understand it for you. But that's a whole nother conversation for another time. I want to talk to you about the good milk, so-called. The electric good milk from Whole Foods. And look at this, this is 40% more calcium. First of all, the problem is, the only reason this is 40% more calcium is because it's fortified. How do we know that it's fortified? Because when we go to the back, we're gonna find out that they have, oh, cane sugar, that's gonna raise my glycemic index, my blood sugar levels, two hours after the time I consume this. But natural flavors, when we see natural flavors, this is a problem, people. If you're vegan and you see natural flavors on your product, understand that when you look up the Food and Drug Administration standard for natural flavors, it is all inclusive of, but not limited to about 30 different things. You have eggs. You have meat, you have poultry, you have fish, you have edible yeast, all sorts of things that vegans don't want to consume. But if your food says natural flavors, you may be subject to any of those things. The reason why it's natural flavors is because that means the product is processed. And if it's processed, that means that it's fortified. They add nutrients to it. And if it's fortified and they add nutrients to it, then it raises the level of estrogen, just like this pus milk right here in the dairy brand. So what's the sense of escaping dairy if you wind up in the same situation? Because when estrogen levels are raised, that precipitates fibroids, okay? Higher the estrogen, the more fibroids. Just like you eat fatty fish, like salmon, not salmon, salmon or tuna, it raises the level of estrogen, just making you more vulnerable and susceptible to fibroids. Brothers and sisters in the black Muslim organizations, 
stop talking about milk is food for the gods, especially when you got black women in there that's leading the world in fibroids. Let's move forward. So I also want you to keep in mind that since this has natural flavors added to it, that means that it's processed, and that means that what? They have put preservatives in this milk so they can prolong the shelf life. They ain't pasteurize it, it's not like this. So they put preservatives in there, and the preservatives compromise the taste. So you have to put the natural flavors in there to compensate for the loss of taste since they put the preservatives in there. Understand that. If you did get a milk off the shelf, I would suggest this. Milks, walnuts, unsweetened, with the only ingredient being filtered water and walnuts. This is not the devil. And we pick walnuts because it has a type of omega-3 in it that nothing on the planet has. Plus, it has a great deal of selenium in there and some tryptophan that converts into serotonin that helps you with your sleep, particularly your REM sleep, so your endocrine system can do its thing to regulate your hormones, which are called instructions. But that's another conversation. We're going to make our own walnut milk today. We're going to make our own walnut milk today. And what we're going to do, there's different sugars here. I would say get maple syrup grade B. This is grade A. Grade B has more nutrients, especially during the time of season. But you might feel away because it's like ripping away or stripping the blood from the plants. You might feel the pain when you see the sap coming out the bark of the tree. It hurts you. Date sugar would probably be the most ideal. It's very sweet. That's what we're going to use. Taste-wise, these two would be the best. But then you have stevia. Okay, stevia is pretty dope. Now understand that when we make this milk, it won't have no emulsifiers. Emulsifiers are very tricky because it's the thing that makes sure that the ingredients are not sitting at the bottom or all in water. It's not having a problem being mixed together, so they put emulsifiers in there. But the emulsifiers that's in your healthy milk, they give it the milky consistency, tears away at the gut, can even create leaky gut, make you feel bloated, give you diarrhea, all sorts of craziness. And it also makes you feel depressed because now the good bacteria are in disarray. Remember, your gut is connected to your brain. So what we're going to do, we're going to add water. Boom. All we got to do now is simple. We're just going to add water. All right. We got the walnuts, two handfuls of walnuts. We put some date sugar in there. The stevia is a, a quiet taste. It's the healthiest sweetener you can put it right here on this table. However, you ain't gonna really like the taste. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. Let's go with the date sugar and let's blend away! Right? And then what's gonna happen is, I did that very fast. I will traditionally take a longer time. It works better with socks, but my wife said, do not be ghetto. This will work better with socks, it's strangely better. Not worn socks, just get some tube socks that's not uh, colored, okay? Just get some 100% cotton tube socks, all right? When no one's watching, because people are all gonna be in their feelings if they see you straining your milk with tube socks. But when no one's looking, I bet you it gives you the best taste. When you are making milk from these nuts, you gotta be careful, pause, because you don't wanna be in a situation where you could feel the shakings in your throat, pause. So. Right here, we're gonna use this strainer. And this is high. But look at that, it's beautiful. No emulsifiers for consistency. Boom. And I'm just getting us through this process. Like I said, I would have blended for a lot longer, but just for the love to the family out there, this right here is so rich in omega-3. This right here is so good that it's also a prebiotic. It feeds the good bacteria. This right here is amazing because you get the iron that you need from the dates. This right here is great because you also get your tryptophan and your selenium so it'll make you sleep better. This right here is great because it's also gonna build the brain. This is food for the gods. So this is all love to my good brothers and sisters. But like I said, fortified foods means that it has a higher estrogen level, okay? Dairy, higher estrogen level. All right, so we want to be careful because our women are leading the world in fibroids, and then those fibroids can impose their space or their will on the child if they're conceiving. But if there's no child conceiving, it puts pressure on the pelvic floor and creates anterior pelvic tilt. Gives them back pains, they could damn near die if they do give birth one day in their life, a whole lot of trauma. But that's it for today, and Brother Polites, well, we're not in the kitchen. Peace out, we're gonna talk later.